So I work with uh, an NGO called CBM, and our area is in the area of disability. So we work to improve the quality of life for persons with disabilities. Uh, disabilities are is an interesting topic because uh, most people don't really think about it. Um, you invite people home for dinner one day, and one of the people who comes is blind, right? Totally blind, can't see a thing, right? What do you do? You know, we take a lot of things for granted. Like, for example, um, when you sit down at, a, at the table for dinner, you can see what you're about to eat, right? You can tell the, the potatoes on this side, the meat's on this side, you know, your cup is on this side. Someone who's blind does not have that benefit. So you literally have to show them that actually your fork is on this side, your plate is on this side. If they're going to sit down on a chair, you have to show the person that this is the back of the chair and this is the seat. So you can't just assume that because you can see it, that they will see it too. Okay? This is just the, some of the practical considerations around inclusion. We think about inclusion in very lofty terms, but when you think about disability and inclusion, it's very practical things. It's everyday stuff. WHO estimates that 15%, um, that's 15% of the world's population live with some form of disability. Okay? Let me bring that closer. That's one billion people. All right? I mean, they're closer. That's almost the entire population of Africa live with some form of a disability. Yeah, this is WHO. Okay, it's probably even higher than that. Um, one in every seven people has a disability. So this is not something that we can ignore um, any longer. Uh, we talk about other conditions, HIV, AIDS, malaria, and, and other things, cancer even. But disability, I would dare say, is as high up on that list because so many people have that problem. Um, and we don't really think about it because it's hardly ever something that's within our orbit. If you think about it, how many people do you know who are wheelchair users? How many people do you know who are deaf? Right? When was the last time you ever had to communicate with somebody who was blind? You never really think about it, do you? Right? And I don't blame anyone because that's not something that, we've, that has been top of the table um, for very long. But that's just the reality. The other dimension I want to bring out is the, um, the vicious cycle that exists between disability and poverty. Now, we're talking about poverty here. And poverty is one of the main causes of disability. And those are factors like nutrition, for example. Some conditions are congenital. You're born with it. And it's partly, to some extent, caused by nutritional factors. Okay? When you're talking about poverty, um, a family that um, has a child with a disability has a very high chance of descending into poverty. Why? Because that child will end up taking up all the resources of that family. Okay? When there's a child with a disability in a family, one of two things happens. One, if the family is well-to-do, they will probably spend most of their resources on that child. Okay? So all the bills, they'll make sure they go to the best school, best hospital, etc. However, on the flip side, if the family is not well-to-do, then the opposite happens. They will completely neglect that child. Right? And you've seen cases, um, even among the, I'd say the 1%, I think all of us here are part of the 1%, uh, if you ask me. Um, and there are cases among us where you have a, a relative or uh, a cousin somewhere who had a child who's a disability and you never see that child, right? They never go for weddings, you never see them anywhere. They're literally locked in a room. Okay, it's unfortunate, but that's just the reality. Yeah, it's even worse for families that are less uh, well-to-do. So we've had cases with, um, at the office where you go to somebody's house and there's a child locked in a room, chained to the wall, okay, by the leg, so that they don't come out. Okay, and they're left there. Mom goes out, I mean, she's got stuff to do, she's got uh, water to fetch, she's got stuff to do, so, you know, the child is a burden, okay? It's unfortunate, it sounds very unfair, but that's just the reality. So there's a very close linkage between disability and poverty. And a lot of families that have uh, disabilities or children or members with disabilities often descend into poverty and vice versa. Um, so, you know, we're talking about inclusion. Um, and, you know, for us at CBM, inclusion is really about ensuring that um, everybody has a voice. Everybody has an opportunity to reach their full potential and has a, the opportunity to enjoy their rights. Okay? And like I said, we don't really think about it. Um, our attitudes towards disability are often, um, at best, you know, not, not on top of your mind at all. Or at worst, um, we think of people with disabilities as being disadvantaged or having a curse or something of a sort. Yeah? Traditional African communities thought of disability as a curse. So if one of your children came out and unfortunately had, or was missing a limb, then there was something that you did 
and somebody cast you somewhere, so you know it's your fault. Um, yet we know that that's not the case. Um, there's a lot of ignorance around it. Um, a lot of people don't really know what disability is about and you know how to engage with the topic. It's very uncomfortable in some situations. Um, I've had opportunity. Some of my colleagues are, are hearing impaired, and it can get a bit awkward because you you want to communicate, but you know you can't really do it. You're having a staff meeting, and you know you have to slow down. You have to make sure that everybody is on board. Um, it can get awkward. That's the truth, right? But that does not mean that we should not include those with disabilities. And I just want to um, sort of end this by saying every one of us is a candidate for disability. Okay? Do you know what the leading cause of physical disabilities in Kenya is? Road accidents. It's road accidents, exactly. All right? They say that uh, what's the number of people who die on, road, on the roads every day, every year? Yeah. It's about 3,000. Yeah? Numbers have put that, um, an estimate of about five times that number, survive road accidents and are left physically permanently disabled, all right? The number is as high as, we did some statistics the other day with my colleagues and it came to about one person every hour um, gets a, a permanent physical disability as a result of a road accident in Kenya today. And we don't hear it. I mean, people say, how bad was the accident? How many people died? Five people died. Ah, oh, sounds so bad, sounds okay. 10 people died, oh, that was nasty. Did anybody die? Nah, that was not a bad accident. Yet we forget that th for every one person who dies, five people, live and they are permanently disabled. And the truth is, every one of us is a candidate. It can happen to any one of us, yeah? You might be okay today. Uh, there's a case of a friend of mine who was a you know, high level job, a big blue chip, so to speak, company in Kenya, had an accident on Thika Road before it became the super highway um, and became paralyzed from the chest down, okay? Thankfully, because of his level in the organization, he had access to you know, medical facilities, so I think he was better off, even now as we speak, he's, he uses an, uh, a motorized wheelchair, so you know, he's probably in the better, um, better off than many people who live with disabilities today. But the point is that one day he was okay driving down his merry way down Thicker Road, and the next thing he was in hospital and paralyzed from the neck down. And that could happen to any one of us any one of us at any time. So the issues of inclusion for disability are things that we can't take lightly. We can no longer ignore them and think that those happen to other people. It happens to every one of us, and we do need to take inclusion for disability very seriously. Wow, thank